Well, I got started in medicine with an interest as a high school student. It just was something that was in my head that I always wanted to do. So I followed up in college and took the right science-based courses and looked at different pathways to enter medicine. The one that appealed to me was anesthesia, and the path I chose was nurse anesthesia. I got my training in the Air Force, and the thing that was really nice is that in addition to learning anesthesia skills and gaining experience, I also learned leadership skills. As a military officer, I was given the coursework and mentoring to develop some very solid leadership skills. Following that, I moved on to the civilian sector, where I gained more leadership experience leading teams at two major institutions. Most recently, I was the chief nurse anesthetist at a major institution where I supervised 109 other nurse anesthetists who covered six different suites of operating rooms. What I saw over the years was a huge void within the rank of frontline healthcare leaders. What I noticed was that quite frequently, the super nurses were promoted into leadership positions and they arrived there with absolutely no background in leadership or training whatsoever. More often than not, even though they were very, very good people, they were excellent healthcare providers, they came up short as leaders. And so my interest over the last few years has been to build a way to teach leadership skills to those people who are in frontline leadership positions. I define frontline leaders as those people who are supervising groups, maybe nurses, maybe x-ray technicians, maybe laboratory technicians, the people who are actually supervising the people giving the hands-on frontline care, I term frontline leaders. Those are the ones who benefit the most from the training that I offer. Good leadership skills make all the difference. You have highly qualified, competent people that show up every day. They want to make a difference in the lives of their patients. They want to make a difference in the outcome for the organization. But they lack focus, they lack direction, sometimes they lack vision, they lack purpose. And it's the job of the leader to give that vision and purpose to the team. All too often, the frontline healthcare workers have spent so much of their career actually giving patient care that they don't know how to develop visions and they don't know how to develop a common purpose for the team. The principles that I teach are the same principles that are used to elevate other companies across the nation. Team development is important regardless of the size of the organization that you're in. I have worked at large organizations where teams were trained and the function of the team elevated, but I've also been in organizations where the entire organization took on leadership training so that not only was the function within the team better, the function between the teams was better. And with leadership training, the leaders learn how to network and interact better with other teams. And even those people who have been leaders five and 10 years can benefit learning new skills, new ways to approach problems, new ways to bring their team together, new ways to empower individual, new ways to have conversations. So leaders at all levels, from entry level to experience, can benefit from leadership training.